HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back. I'm your host, Jared Carter, uh, bringing you exciting and uh, distinguished voices from the HBCU community. Today, we have a student in our midst, which is always a spectacular treat for me. Um, so often we're talking to the executives and talking to alumni, um, but it's always a thrill uh, to speak to the future executives and alumni who are going to be running this planet. And today uh, we have a very special uh, guest with us, Ariella Houston. Uh, she is a duly enrolled chemistry and chemical engineering major at both the Bennett College for Women in North Carolina A&T State University. And she is also an entrepreneur who was recently one of a handful of women uh, selected as a grand prize winner in Victoria's Secret's Pink Girl Power Project, uh, which was an initiative or has been an initiative for several years uh, to bestow grants to female entrepreneurs across the country uh, to help bolster uh, opportunities and access uh, for other young women across this great nation and world uh, to realize their greatest potential. So, Ariella, uh, indeed, an honor to have you on today. Hello. So, Tell us about being this 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 grand prize winner um, and what it's like, because you you win for a business that you actually started, uh, what, three or four years ago at the age of 15. Yeah. Um, and now you're you're on this national stage as an entrepreneur um, who's doing great things to advance the cause of girls and women across the country. Talk about how you became knowledgeable about the Victoria's Secret Initiative and, and how you think you got uh, to the point where you could win it. Okay, so um, it's honestly been a whirlwind of excitement. I applied. Well, I got the notification. You know, I follow Pink. I'm part of their app. You know, who doesn't shop at, you know, Pink or Victoria's Secret? So I honestly get all the emails all the time. And it came out in an email back in February. And I was like, you know what? I have a business. I want to grow my brand. I want to get my name out there. And it doesn't hurt to just try. Right. The application process was super easy. Um, we had to submit like three heroes or three women in our lives that we look up to. And then a, two, a short two minute video about our business and how we can advance the society of women or ourselves. So I was basically like, you know, I have this whole business based around. Well, now it's based around my entire institution, um, Bennett College and giving you know, the Bell's easy access to cute apparel that creates body body positivity. So I was like, okay, yeah, I totally fit into this category. So let me just try it. And you won the joint. <laughs> I did. And so you, I did, which was so surprising. <laughs> you keep on shining because a lot of your work has been featured nationally because of what's been going on with Bennett College. So yeah. this, is a, this is a high that just continues to get higher. Talk about how... The, the experience of being not only a CEO, but having the, you know, the relative embrace of your school to be a part of such a historic movement for Bennett and for HBCUs, raising millions of dollars to try to save the school's accreditation, having, you know, uh, logos and your designs featured on, on people all across the country via social media. What was that experience like? Honestly, it's so crazy, like, seeing people post or different networks post people and they're wearing my clothes. I'm just sitting back like, okay, that's me. Like, that's my name. That's my brand. It's so amazing to see. And it's like, it's, it's honestly breathtaking just being like sitting back and being like, okay, I'm part of this movement. Like, you know, obviously it was something that we weren't expecting, just like a huge impact on our entire community. And it was great to be a part of the comeback. Yeah, definitely. So with this Victoria's Secret Initiative, I, I believe you were the only HBCU student uh, to, to, to be one of the winners, one of the grand prize winners, correct? Yes. So yes, I would. let's go backward a little bit and talk about starting your business because at 15, 16 years old, that is around the time you also start getting serious about college um, yeah. and considering where you want to go. So what was the experience like one to, to, develop an entrepreneurial spirit and then say at the same time, and yep, I'm also going to, to school uh, across the country somewhere. And how did you select Bennett slash North Carolina A&T to be a chemistry whiz and a chemi chemical engineering whiz all at the same time? Yeah. What was that process like developing these two interests simultaneously? So back when I started my business, it was actually a clothing line for the Girl Scouts of San Gregorio Council back in California. Mm -hmm. So when I got to um, Bennett, 
I chose Bennett in North Carolina a and by the way, because of the dual degree program. Mm-hmm. Like, that was something that was an amazing opportunity to go get two degrees for the price of one. I mean, who passes that up, right? Right. So when I moved to Bennett, you know, I, every parent wants to, when you move your daughter into college, every parent wants to hit up the bookstore and get the proud Bennett mom, proud Bennett dad t-shirts, right? Mm-hmm. So when we walked down into the bookstore, we were um, a little surprised by the selection of items that we had to pick from. I think there was maybe three shirts, but we had high hopes that throughout the school year that they would come out with some more stuff and I would be able to get it and like send it back to my family. But that didn't happen. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the situation in my own hands. I know everybody on campus wants the, wants the clothes, wants the items. So I'm going to do it myself. Mm-hmm. If they're not going to give it to me, I'm going to do it myself. So I went back the entire summer after my freshman year, rebranded my entire business, um, turned it into an apparel line for HBCUs, mainly focusing on Bennett because that was my first, you know, my first partnership. Mm-hmm. And I came back in the fall of my sophomore year and was like, y'all asked for it, here it is, and launched my first line of clothes on, I believe, July 27th. And been, so, and been running running successfully ever since. And it's been running successfully ever since. Growing, I mean, we're transferring into, like, rebranding into going into a market with a bunch of other HBCUs and did, getting different connections and just making it a a nationwide thing. What was the process like in building that partnership with Bennett? Um, to I assume to carry a lot of your your stuff in the in the bookstore to make it available yeah. to shop online. What were the mm-hmm. conversations like, and what was that? What was it like? Was it easy to build that agreement with the school? It definitely was. Um, I had to go through the alumni office, and they were more than supportive of my ideas and my brand and they're like if this is what you want to do we're going to support you 100 percent they always gave me booths at any event any um anything like that they always gave me a free booth to be able to sell my stuff and they put me in contact with everybody that i needed to be in contact with to start working on the process to get my stuff inside the bookstore so it was they were more than helpful and it was definitely an easy transition to get them to to be on board It's so interesting that you you can tell in your voice that you have and have had such a positive experience with your HBCUs, which is unique in itself to be attending two at one time. Um, But one of them, um, you know, ran into a rough spot. And I think it's very rare that all the all the stuff that we have heard about Bennett over the last year, um, you do hear from students and saying, you know, our school deserves to be here. But what was it like to live and what is it like to live through this scenario of losing accreditation, rallying to trying to get it back, suing to have it up, you know, upheld? You know, what what is it like to live on campus during a time like this? To be completely transparent with you, it is the scariest thing that. I have done to date, Mm -hmm. like not knowing whether or not we're going to keep our accreditation or if I'm going to graduate with an accredited degree or if my, if schools that I want to like attend, you know, after undergrad are going to be like, you know, well, this school back then went through so much stuff. So are you really, you know, a really a contender for our program? So it's been really scary. Um, Definitely something that's, I wouldn't wish upon any other HBCU or any other HBU students to have to go through something like this. But it's also really shown how strong our community of people are that surround Bennett and that are in Bennett. Like when the situation happened, all the students came together and was like, what are we going to do? Like, this is a problem with our institution. So how are we going to help? Like, what are we going to do to bring the community in? Who can we reach out to? So it was also a good moment to see, like, other HBCUs and students on our campus rallying to be like, okay, we deserve to be here. So we're going to be here. And what was it like to to engage with the administration at that time? Um, Because certainly, you know, the the sisters have the, you know, the ear of the of the administration at a time like this, where it's like, okay, these are the paying stakeholders that are helping us stay here by, by, you know, helping us build revenue. 
Um, so were they attentive to your concerns? What did what did you find the administration to be like during that time? I think they were trying their best. Mm -hmm. There was definitely some moments where we, the students and like the parents of the students kind of felt like we were, um, what's the right word? Being kept in the dark about some situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and they just weren't completely transparent with all the information right away, right away or in the timely manner that we would have liked. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they, I mean, it was, they didn't really have many options. So I feel like they tried their best. They tried to do what they could do as possible. Yeah, what they could do with the information that they had. And like, you know, there's certain things, certain steps you have to take to be in the right. So they definitely tried their best. So I, I can give them that. Tried their best. And you're a, a junior, a junior at Bennett, right? Yeah, I'm rising junior. Rising junior. And uh, I think you're maybe, what, a semester or two behind at A&T classification wise. Um, yeah, a rising sophomore at A&T. So when, when you look ahead, um, you know, the, uh, your career is really in, in bloom now as an entrepreneur and yet you have ambitions to to learn and to study as a chemical engineer. How do you, what do you see for your future academically? Is it graduate school? Is it a PhD program? Is it working in the sciences? Or is it, hey, this is where I have a working interest, but this is something that I'm doing in complement to my professional or entrepreneurial interests. Do those two mm -hmm. work together at all? How do, how do you kind of see your future five or 10 years from now? Well, I definitely want to go into an MD PhD program after I graduate with my engineering degree, mm -hmm. since that'll be the later one. Um, I see myself being a professor. I want to teach and teach specifically at an HBCU to be a representation for, you know, women of color in STEM. So that's what I want to do with that aspect. Um, that's something that I'm good at. But when it comes to something that I love, my business is something that I love. Mm -hmm. It is, I feel like it's a great way for people to get, you know, the cute clothes that you wouldn't normally see. It promotes and gives people like a conversation starter about their HBCU. Um, and at the same time, it's just like, it promotes like, you know, body positivity. It's not just the regular t-shirt and sweatpants, you know, it's the, the body suits and the biker shorts. And it really promotes, you know, it gets people feeling comfortable in their own skin and being like, okay, this is cute and I can rock this. When you, so I just see that growing. When yeah. you, when you look ahead at, at students, cause there are a lot of students across the country at HBCUs that are just like you, they have entrepreneurial mm -hmm. spirit. Um, they're really into their studies, really into earning a degree and, and knowing what that means. When you talk to them or if you had an opportunity to speak with them about pursuing passion, but having a, a grounded professional focus in a degree program, what advice would you mm -hmm. give them if they're trying to decide, I don't know if I should stay in school. Should I drop out? Should I do both? How would you advise them on what to do when you have these kind of divergent perspectives on how to how to make money and how to be happy professionally yeah definitely um my mom has always told me to follow your dreams but to have a backup plan mm -hmm. so that is something that i live by like you know owning the business and being an entrepreneur is my dream but you know anything could happen and i always want to be able to have something steady to fall back on just in case you know I have a slow time in my business or, you know, my business is transitioning to, to something else or, um, you know, things like that. So I always want to be able to have something, something steady to fall back on just in case, like my, my passion and my love doesn't take me far enough to be able to support myself. And then the final question I would, I would ask for you, and I hope you don't read this as a tricky one. Um, mm -hmm. With all the pride that you have, how would you advise that same student to regard an HBCU? And if it was a sister, would you advise them that Bennett remains a strong choice? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one is a little tricky. Yeah. I'm going to say for HBCU, for anyone that is looking to go to, to further their education, go to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. I recommend it to 
any students of color. It is the best thing that has ever happened to me, just seeing the greatness of, you know, what other people consider or we are minorities, just seeing them like be entrepreneurs, be engineers, be doctors, be lawyers. It is the most amazing thing to witness. Um, when it comes to Bennett, if I'm being 110% honest with you, Bennett gave me my business and has helped me grow into this young entrepreneur that I am. So I will always be thankful for that. Bennett is going through a shaky time right now. Um, but in a couple years, I think that Bennett can be back to its place that it should be. So maybe not now, but in a couple years, I would be I would be ready to fight for Bennett and be like, yeah, you need to go here. <laughs>